Welcome to Euro Bangla City SETV News. This is Nuri Alamin with the headlines. The nation is set to observe the March of Intellectuals Day tomorrow in a befitting manner. Government to administer booster doses to the fault liners. Over 60s from this month, said Health Minister. United Nations urges a full reopening of South Asia schools, including Bangladesh, amid learning loss by the corona pandemic. Health Minister Jahid Malik said today that government will administer COVID-19 booster doses to the senior citizens, but the date for the campaign has not yet been decided. Zahid Malik said they will sit later to set the date. He said it while talking to the reporters after an interministerial meeting on COVID-19 at the ministry. The meeting discussed measures on how to prevent Omicron, a new variant of COVID-19, from entering the country and contain its spread. The minister said the government is commanding a ban on flights from African countries to move to stem the infections. Jahid Malik listed a number of other measures the meeting has decided to take in tackling the virus. The nation is set to observe the Martyr Intellectuals Day tomorrow in a befitting manner. Just two days ahead of the country's cherished victory on this day, 50 years ago, the occupation Pakistan army, in collision with their local collaborators, al Badr al-Shams and Rajakar Belchard, the most prominent intellectuals of the country, in a bid to cripple the newly emerging nation of Bangladesh. A memorial erected in memory of the martyred intellectuals at Mirpur in the capital has been redied. At national leaders and people from all walks of life will pay the glowing tributes by placing red there. The national programs have been chalked out to observe the Martyr Intellectuals Day with due to respect. President Mohammed Abdul Hamid and Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina will issue the separate messages on this occasion. South Asian countries should fully reopen schools to address the interrupted education of more than 400 million children whose classrooms were shut by the coronavirus pandemic, said UNICEF, with a top official warning the consequences could last decades. Schools in Bangladesh were closed for almost 18 months, one of the longest closures in the world, the United Nations Children's Agency said, while schools in other South Asian countries were shut for an average of the 31.5 weeks between the March 2020 and August this year. This happened in a region where there were no strong conditions for remote learning, so George Laria Adze, UNICEF's regional director for the South Asia. Being out of this school also led to students experiencing psychosocial distress, the poor mental health, and increased the risk of violence. Girls were at a high risk of early marriage, he also added. UNESCO database say the schools in India, Bangladesh, Nepal and Afghanistan remain only partially open while those in Pakistan and Sri Lanka are fully open. The U.S. has made no comment on media reports saying that the former Army Chief General Aziz Ahmed's U.S. visa has been revoked. Reports said the U.S. visa of Aziz Ahmed who retired on June 24 this year has been revoked and it was the communicate to him throughout the later recently. U.S. State Department said the visa records are confidential under U.S. law. Therefore, they cannot discuss the details of the individual's visa cases. The U.S. Embassy in Dhaka also said the same. The Bangladesh Embassy in the Washington also wanted to know from the U.S. State Department on this issue. The issue has surfaced just after the U.S. imposed sanctions against Rab and seven of these current and former officials on the human rights ground. Welcome back and you are watching Euro Bangla City SETV News. Now international story updates. Rescuers walked through the ride searching for survivors from what could be the longest tornado in the U.S. history that left a trail of destruction across six states from Arkansas to Kentucky. 
Hardest hit was Kentucky, where streets were left turned in rubble and debris from the collapsed buildings. There were lots of warnings. In fact, even at the factory, there was a warning for people to get to the right area. Dozens of people are still unaccounted for in Kentucky, where at least 100 people were believed to have been killed. The powerful twisters destroyed a candle factory as well as the fire and police stations. The small town in Kentucky ripped through a nursing home in neighboring Missouri and killed at least six workers in an Amazon warehouse in the Illinois. The sources said over 70,000 people are left without power in Tennessee. President Joe Biden has approved an emergency disaster declaration for Kentucky and vowed to support other states affected by the tornado. Russia will face massive consequences and severe cost if President Vladimir Putin attacks Ukraine. That's according to the G7 delegates who warned in a statement on Sunday that they were united in their condemnations of Moscow's military build-up near Ukraine urging Russia to de-escalate, reaffirming their commitment to the Ukrainian sovereignty and territorial integrity. The G7 foreign ministers further pledged to intensify their cooperation on their common and comprehensive response without giving sacrifices. The G7 members also expressed concern about the coercive the economic policies of the China. Deputy Minister of the Information and Culture and Spokesman of the Taliban, Zabiullah Mujahid, said that Pakistan's ruling political system doses, doesn't respond to represent the Islamic system. He said that the country is governed by an imposed system from the abroad. In a recent interview with the Radio Free from Afghanistan made the above remarks. The spokesman of an Islamic Emirates of the Afghanistan added that Pakistan rulers prioritize the economic interest over the Islam. Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett has arrived in the United Arab Emirates to meet the Gulf state's de facto ruler, the first ever visit to the UAE by the Israeli Prime Minister. This is the first time official visit by the Israeli Prime Minister to the UAE. Bennett's office said the Bennett will meet Crown Prince the Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nayan today during the high level visit. The leader will discuss uh, deepening the ties between the Israel and UAE, especially economic and regional issues. The two countries formalized relations last year as part of the US broker agreement known as the Abraham Accords. The agreement has led to the raft to deal there ranging from the tourism and business to cutting edge the technology. However, there was no immediate confirmation from the UAE. Russian President Vladimir Putin has said the collapse of the Soviet Union spelled the end of the historical Russia, revealing the drop of a taxi to make ends met following the USSR's fall. The comments reported by state-run news agency RIA Novosti. The end of the union brought with a period of the intense economic instability that plunged many into the poverty as newly independent, the Russia transitioned from the communism of the capitalism, earned extra money by the car as a private driver. It's unpleasant to talk about, be honest, but unfortunately that was the case, said the Russian leader. Russia was the center of the Soviet Union that grew to include 15 republics from the ballistic in the West to the Central Asia. According to the World Organization for Animal Health, more than 40 countries across Asia, Europe and Africa have reported bird flu outbreaks since the May. Dalai Nilufar has more. The mass outbreaks, which have been overshadowed by the COVID-19 pandemic, have threatened to drive up food prices, which are nearing record levels. In Europe, a new wave of bird flu risks, combined with labor shortages and high feed and energy costs that led to a huge surge in poultry prices. According to the UN World Food Programme, world meat prices have increased 16% this year and are at the highest seasonal level since 2014. 
while poultry production is largely adequate to meet the global demand, shaping outlets and flu outbreaks in Europe and Asia are adding to the supply challenges. Millions of birds were culled in Europe last winter due to bird flu, and cases this year are rising earlier than usual, forcing countries like the UK to order birds indoors to protect them from the virus. Dalian Nulfar, SGV News Desk. Miss India Harna Sandhu was crowned Miss Universe in the Israeli city of Eilat with several contestants defying pressure to boycott in support of the Palestinians. Paraguay's Nadia Ferreira took the first runner-up spot while the Miss South Africa Lelela Maswan clinched the second runner-up title, the 70th edition of the annual Pizant held in Israel for the first time had also faced the complications from the coronavirus pandemic. The Palestinian campaign for the academic and cultural boycott of Israel urged the participants to withdraw to avoid complicity in Israel's apartheid regime and its violation of Palestinian human rights. Before ending, we go through Irobanga City SCTV News headlines again. The nation is set to observe the March on Intellectuals Day tomorrow in a befitting manner. Government to administer booster doses to frontliners over 60s from this month, said Health Minister. United Nations urges full reopening of South Asia schools, including Bangladesh, amid learning loss by the corona pandemic. You are up to date with the Eurobanga City ACTV News, and to know the latest news, visit www.sctv.tv. Stay with SCTV.